Good morning everyone. It is really it's not morning. It's about one o'clock. Time flies when you're working hard, right? You betcha. Uh, a little bit of everything today. I have some show and tell to show and tell you. This is some family photographs that I think you'll like to see. Uh, oh my goodness, I got my wrong glasses on. Oh well, we're just going to do the best we can. Okay, this is a, these are all black and white. These were taken many years ago. I don't remember the year that my mom and dad were married, but I do know mom was born in 1913 and dad was born in 1912. They lived a year apart and when God took them to heaven, they died a year apart. That sometimes happens. Um, this is a, photograph of their wedding picture if you can see it my mom wore an organza dress filmy material they don't even make it nowadays there was a fabric rose there in the center it had fluffy little sleeve, uh, sleeves and a little neckline dipping and a long skirt dad wore a simple suit as you can see very handsome couple for sure they were uh, married in Colville, which is the hometown of their hometown. Well, it's not Dad's hometown, because he he was born in South Dakota. My dad was. My mom was born in Colville. Okay, and then my brother and I, offspring of this couple, we were born in Colville, Washington. This is a picture of myself when I was eight years old. I look like I have buck teeth, but I don't. They finally grew normally. Um, little pudgy girl that I was, I slimmed down when I was about 15 years of age, and at that time I had a really nice figure, but until then I was pretty darn fat. And then this is my handsome, mischievous little brother, Dennis. And uh, look at that curly hair there, will ya? Look at that, isn't he cute? Isn't he just the cutest little guy? Well, I'll tell you how cute he was. Every once in a while, my mom would make him up to look like a little girl. I mean, that's back in the day you could get away with it when people didn't think you were a transvestite, which my brother is absolutely 1,000% all male. Okay, so don't get that idea in your head. But that was, you know, back in the 40s when, um, or early 50s, when you could get away with doing things that you sure couldn't do nowadays. So anyway, because he was so cute, and then he had little freckles later developed uh, and curly hair, mom would dress him up in a dress and then she'd make him hold one of my little baby dolls and then she'd take a picture of him with the old camera. And she just thought that was the cutest little thing. And then, of course, she'd show it to all the relatives when they'd come to visit. And, oh, look at Danny. Wouldn't, wouldn't he have made a cute little girl? Maybe, maybe Mom wanted a sister for me. And I don't know. I don't know what the deal was. But nevertheless, Danny was mischievous. My mom had a mischievous streak every now and then and did that to my poor, bro my poor little brother. <clears throat> but... My brother Denny, yeah, he was pretty mischievous. He was always, he liked to pull pranks on people and joke around and set them up for whatever, you know, just little pranks. Um, good-hearted kid, good-hearted guy, always has been. He's, he's, he looks like he's, he looks like he could be tough and rough, but really he's not. He's got a, a heart that's just very tender, you know, the, old story about burly like a bear and you know soft as soft as a bunny rabbit inside so that's kind of what my my brother is I don't know what I am I have no idea what I am I'm just a little bit of everything I guess um, mom and dad celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary and it was shortly after that that mom well, Mom had congestive heart failure for, I'm not sure how many years, because she was not 
properly diagnosed by the doctors until it had taken a real hard hold on her. But I know she suffered from that for a number of years. Um, yeah, and then she developed the, the hip problem, which people in our side of the family, on my mom's side of the family, we just have hip trouble. I think I have three uncles that have had hip replacements. I think my Aunt Mary did. I'm not sure, but I think she did. And I know for sure that three of my uncles did. My daughter Melanie tends to have problems a little bit, and of course I do, and it just runs in that side of the family. So just take really good care of your health, okay? The uh, thing about Mom and Dad's anniversary, though, it was really nice because we had it at Melanie's home when she was married to Mike and all the relatives on my dad's side, which live, lived here on the coast, <clears throat> they came to celebrate with Mom and Dad. And when they opened their anniversary gifts for their 50th year, they were sitting at Melanie's uh, dining room table and my dad just started crying. He just started crying and he just brushing away the tears. You know, my, fo my folks had a pretty bumpy marriage and it didn't really smooth out until their elder years. And once my dad became a Christian and gave his heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, he mellowed out quickly after that and that was awesome because during that period of time uh, he and mom got along well together they they loved each other they were deter I think they were determined even in spite of the bumpy road that they traveled during most of their marriage they were just determined to stay together you know they had a, a dedication and a determination in a marriage that you don't see very much of nowadays. Nowadays it's just a lot easier to go to the divorce court and get a divorce. And you know, that's partly because of no-fault divorce. I mean, in a way, I'm glad there is that ruling because there are a lot of couples that are together that are one or the other are really suffering and should not be, that it was a match made in hell and not in heaven. And for that, I'm glad there is no fault divorce. But on the other hand, in some cases, if a couple, if they're just having a hard time and they don't have that loyalty or that love or determination, they just give up at the first drop of a hat. I mean, they don't even try. You know, they just think, well, I'll just get a divorce, you know, a few hundred bucks and I'm free. I don't like that idea. I think it does a lot of harm. So as with anything in this life, there's the good side and then there's the bad side. So anyway, I'm glad that my mom and dad stayed together. I think it would have been a shame if they'd have divorced and split the family up. Uh, I did that. I felt that I had no I had no choice. I really had no choice. And uh, the father of my children and I split up because he's the one that served on me and I I didn't have any choice. And our marriage was pretty terrible anyway, so yeah, for every every effect in life there's a cause. So if you're in a situation, whatever it may be, I'm not talking about marriage now, any situation, whether it's your job, your location, your health or lack of it, your friends or lack of them, whatever your situation, for every, for every effect, there's a cause. So, if you're in a bad situation, ask yourself, well, I wonder why, and I wonder if I can change it. And if you can't change it, then you accept it, and you live by God's grace, and by God's mercy, 
you do your best, you hang in there, you grit your teeth and you bear it. I don't particularly like a lot of things about where I'm living. It's in, in some ways, it's uh, certainly not what I would have chosen had I had more money. <laughs> so many things nowadays are contingent upon that. But, on the other hand, I'm thankful for it. It certainly could be a lot worse. You know, when I was, I took, I'm going to wrap this up here now in a second, but I just want to end it on this note. <clears throat> I have to take my laundry outside and do it in the laundry room that's shared by eight other or seven other people. And it's not very sanitary. We've got some people here that are not very clean. And it's very inconvenient to walk over there and back, especially when it's raining like crazy like it was yesterday. But when I took my laundry out today, I, I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I thank you that I don't live in the nation of India that I don't have to take my laundry down to the river and wash it in the filth of a river that's shared by hundreds of people, maybe thousands, not just seven other families. So there's always, or maybe not always, but there's usually a reason in life to be thankful for something because usually it could be a lot worse. So, the attitude of gratitude is important. I don't always have it, and I admit that. I am working on it, and I would hope that we all are, because we do have a lot to be thankful for. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for watching our show and tell, and God bless. Have a wonderful day. See you later. Bye-bye.